Good day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Thursday sort of lunchtime here in Australia and how quickly things can change. Now we're not out of the woods just yet but we can see, you know, they had the B word conference and a lot of people have sort of been, you know, looking into that and it has definitely turned the market up some. I mean, up 7.2%, back over 1.3 trillion, well, sitting on 1.3 trillion so that's pretty good. Uh, volume uh, increased uh, quite nicely. Bitcoin price looking good. And again, Bitcoin dominance actually fell a little. Only the tiniest little bit though. But obviously, you can see, I mean, on the screen at the moment, there's just, it's a sea of green. There's green all over the place. Now, I don't want people to get too excited just yet. Because we need to remember, particularly how fast the market changed. And when we have a look at the Bitcoin charts, I mean, that first big dump in Bitcoin was massive. That could still happen. We're not out of the woods just yet. Now, I don't think we're going to go any lower. I'm hoping that that was the bottom, but it may not have been. We'll just have to wait and see. Again, just proceed with a bit of caution is all I'm saying. If we really sort of, you know, we get above 34,000, 36,000, I think the bull run is on. I think it's comfortable to say that. But... Just yet. Again, be careful. I'm not sort of jumping into anything just yet. Don't get me wrong. I'm still buying. I do my fortnightly buy every fortnight. But, you know, the money I have sitting on the side, and I don't have a whole lot, but I have some, I'm not just jumping into stuff yet. Because we've seen pumps, and then literally within 24 hours, we see dumps that basically wipe out almost all of those gains, if not sometimes more. So, again, let's just proceed with caution. But look, it is looking good at the moment. I mean, what's done the best in the last 24 hours? Let's have a look, because it looks pretty good there. Holy moly, there we go. Telcoin, uh, Ucash, Axie Infinity, so jumped up again. Uh, yeah, wish I had been on Axie, Axie Infinity. Wouldn't touch it now, it's just uh, pumped too much. But that's me. Uh, I never offer financial advice. You to you. Stax has had a nice pump. Same with Matic. Well done. Congratulations. That is looking good. Flow, Aave. I mean, look, there's, you know, 20% and 15% gains almost across the board. So that is absolutely fantastic. But we still have the weekend upon us. And so it could be a bit of a dead cat bounce sort of thing, a bit of a fake out, you know what I mean? A bit of a, a pump before we go even lower. Again, I'm not trying to spread FUD and I'm not saying that's what's going to happen. We just need to be mindful that that is what could happen. We just have to wait and see. But looking good. What about losses though in the top 100? Any losses? All right, Leo US, no, not Leo USD, but sorry, Leo hasn't done well. Faye uh, had a very minor pullback, and then really it's all just the dollar coin. So really there's one coin out of the top 100 that uh, didn't do well, and everything else has done fairly well. So looking good at the moment, and, you know, optimistically optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> if that makes any sense. Not, again, getting too crazy just yet, but hopefully this is the sign that the bottom is in and things are going upwards. But let's have a look at the Bitcoin chart because this might give us a bit of an indication. So as we can see, we kind of, we were bouncing off this downwards trend line. We can see we used it as support and it was resistance and then we bounced off it, bounced off it, bounced off it. And then we had this nice little pump after the B word conference, almost the exact same time but I just don't want people to get too carried away because we're still under 32,000 above 30,000 which is good and now look the RSI I mean that changed very quickly look at that boom and it's actually jumped and it's sitting right on this downwards trending line at the moment if we're above it we're in a bullish kind of trend because we're not below it uh, but now we're sitting right back on it and we can see on the MACD as well it did something very similar you can see almost went, not quite vertical, but jumped back up and now it's sitting right on this sort of orange line here. So again, things are looking good at the moment, but I just wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't get too ahead of yourselves just yet. Again, not financial advice, just my personal opinion. We still haven't broke this kind of level here. So 36,000, we're not above that. And we certainly haven't broken above sort of 41,000. And what we need to remember is we could have a pump all the way up to this downtrending line, so it might be somewhere over sort of around about here, and then we reject and go lower. Just things we need to look at. Not saying that is what's going to happen, just, again, we've got to have all possibilities, 
in our minds about, okay, if it does this, what am I going to do? And if it does this, i.e. the opposite, what am I going to do? All right, a couple of interesting stories. So major crypto mining company, Core Specific, sorry, Scientific, going public on NASDAQ with $4.3 billion valuation. So who says that, you know, crypto's, uh, you know, going to go, particularly Bitcoin, going down to 10000 or something like that? I just can't see it. I don't think these big major companies are going to get into something with it going down so much. I think a lot of big companies, big players, have been artificially pushing the price down, keeping it low so they can buy more and also so their friends can get in more. But eventually they have to let it go because they want it to go up. There's only so far down that number one, they could push it. Uh, and you gotta remember, they have to spend money to push it down. So again, I've given this analogy for, uh, before. Say you had a billion dollars to invest in Bitcoin and it was at $64,000 and you were just like, that is way too much. I just, I can't afford, you know, I don't want to be buying it at 64000 I really want to be getting it somewhere around 28000 uh, And again, I'm not saying this is exactly what is done, but this is something that could be done. It would probably take a little bit more money. But you got your hunt, you got your $1 billion, $300 million. You go and buy some Bitcoin. You buy it OTC, so you get it at a cheaper price anyway. Let's say it's selling for 64000 on the spot market. You might be lucky enough to pick it up for 63000 62000 uh, per Bitcoin. Something like that. Maybe not quite that, but you do get it cheaper. You then take your $300 million worth of Bitcoin, put it on the spot market, and start to sell, 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 sell and push the market down. Remember, you had a billion to start with, you spent three million, 300 million on Bitcoin, you got another 700 million left. If it works out well, you are able to then, by constant sell pressure, sell, 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 push the Bitcoin price down maybe to 28,000. At 28,000, you have your 700,000 left over set at a buy order. That's how they manipulate the markets. That is legitimately how it's done. Not exactly like that, but very similar to that. And that's how they could push the markets down. Again, Bitcoin was at 64,000, it was too high. They wanted it to come lower. Some players, and might not, it, it wouldn't have been one, it would have been a group, there would have been people getting together, have artificially pushed the price down to where it is now. They may not be done, they might push it even lower so they can get their orders filled because when you buy OTC, they still base it off the spot price, but just a little bit cheaper. So if Bitcoin's at 64,000 on the spot and you buy it OTC, you're not getting it at 28,000. It is all dependent on what people are paying for it on the spot market. So you push the spot market price down, get it as low as you can, and then you do your big massive OTC order, which will not affect the markets in any way, shape or form. And that right there is market manipulation. And I 100% believe that is what has happened. It's not all market manipulation, but there's definitely been plenty of it. And unfortunately, there might be more to come. But I mean, $4.3 billion for a mining company, whew, says to me that there's plenty of big money still in this space and the best is yet to come. All right, Elon Musk, very, very interesting. He's came out and said, SpaceX holds Bitcoin. He actually said some really good things about uh, Bitcoin. Uh, and, you know, he was honest about things and, you know, and uh, reasons why he's done things. And I'm not going to try and, you know, go through exactly what he said in the interview. You can find it on YouTube. Uh, Cryptos R Us actually uh, put the whole thing on there. So you want to go have a look at his channel. But he basically said him fudding Bitcoin and all the rest of it doesn't help him financially. It actually hurts him because the Bitcoin price went lower than what he bought it for. I think he ended up getting it for $31,000 or $30,000 and it went under that. So maybe, he, you know, the, the conspiracy theory is that he could have pushed it down to buy some more, maybe. Uh, but it was very, very interesting what he said. And again, he's, you know, with Tesla specifically. So you need to remember SpaceX is privately owned. They don't have to declare what Bitcoin they have. Tesla, public traded company, do have to. So Elon Musk didn't need to say that SpaceX owns Bitcoin, but he did. That's bullish. He didn't have to do that. He was not obligated to. He obviously does believe in Bitcoin and wants it to work, but he's 
his you know kind of core business let's say the, or the one he's you know in charge of is tesla they're all about being environmentally friendly now again there's things about you know the lithium batteries that are in the cars and they're not environmentally friendly nothing is 100 percent environmentally friendly we're not 100 percent environmentally friendly we eat other things that uh, you know affects the balance in nature now there's a, supposed to be a fine line so you know we do eat things but also you know we fart and poo and we and all the rest of it so there and that's not good for the environment as long as it's sort of kept in check it doesn't ruin the environment but again there's nothing that really i, I could think that would be 100 percent truly environmentally friendly other than maybe air but even then maybe there could be too much of that who knows but you know I'm, i've gone off track he is very bullish on bitcoin he he alluded to the fact that it looks like Bitcoin is at least 56% renewable energy now, and he said he wanted the target to be 50%, that it would be likely that Tesla would open up payments for Bitcoin for his cars again. And really, that was the FUD that kind of started to drive it down. So is this now the start of it going back up? What we need to remember, though, is things can literally drop four or five times faster than they go up. So it might have only taken, you know, literally two or three days for Bitcoin to come all the way down and we go over to the chart. And I mean, look at that. So it was one, two, three. Oh, there was about a week there. So a little bit over sort of seven days. What do we have here? Uh, what was the date? 9th of May to the 19th of May. Yeah, there we go. 10 days. Uh, it dropped all that. It will take longer than 10 days for us to get back up here, I can tell you right now. So that's what we need to keep in mind. But anyway, things are looking good at the moment. SpaceX hold Bitcoin. Elon Musk came out and said that he ha he owns Bitcoin himself, like personally. Uh, it's the biggest position he has in crypto. He does own Doge and he owns Ethereum as well. But they don't even come close to the amount of uh, Bitcoin or the value of Bitcoin that he owns. So he is a really strong believer in Bitcoin, but he saw issues with it. You know, mining needed to be greener and all those sorts of things. So, you know, there's method behind the madness uh, of Elon. And look, all, you know, people that, you know, basically are very, very intelligent and, you know, become very, very wealthy in that, they all, they are all a little bit eccentric in some ways. You have to be. You know, the average person just will not be able to do what they do. And that's just the cold, hard truth of it. You know, someone like me, I consider myself at least somewhat normal. I wouldn't be able to do what they did. And it's because I don't have a mindset like them. So a little bit crazy, eccentric for sure but a very, very smart dude. And he's not out to, like he said, he owns a lot of Bitcoin, he believes in it. He wouldn't intentionally fud it to then ruin uh, it for himself and obviously decrease uh, his value and the value of his company, which holds a lot of it. All right, this could be big. So Tether, they have said, so people from within Tether have said they are going to release the long awaited audits within months. This could be massive. Massive, massive, massive for cryptocurrencies. A lot of people, you know, all the tether fud, it's not, you know, supported and backed and all the rest of it. They had the kind of small little audit that was done, but it wasn't a full audit, so people were still skeptical. And it seems like tether are coming out with a full audit to show exactly how everything is backed. Now, you know, it still has to be taken with a pinch of salt, as they say, because it's their own audit. It's not someone else doing it, as far as I know. It could be a bit fraudulent, but if it turns out to be 100% legit, that will then clear off that doubt and worry that has hung over cryptocurrency, and particularly Bitcoin's head, since Tether started like a few years ago. If that is cleared up and Tether can become compliant, fully regula regulatory and all the rest of it, and I think that's what they're aiming to do because they can see USDC is hot on their heels and they don't want to lose that place, I think the market will it'll fire right up from that again still months i'm not saying we can't go up until then but i think if in a couple of months i.e the next sort of two three months there's an audit that comes out and it's you know as you know clear as it can be that they are back dollar for dollar i think the market starts to go much higher from wherever it is at that time i think this is massive news right se chairman Hints at more lawsuits against Stoke and Tock issue, uh, Stoke, <laughs> Stoke and Stock token issuers. Sorry, apologies again. <laughs> Struggling with the English language. All right, so Gary Gensler has come out and he 
he has basically said, if you want to have a token on crypto that represents a stock, you have to be fully compliant with that. So synthetic assets, and I'm not talking about synthetics, the platform, although they will have to do exactly the same. But they are already talking about Binance, so that's the issues. Binance got rid of them. Uh, FTX token uh, is going to have face some issues and things like that. And particularly synthetics assets, it'll be interesting to see how they maneuver around that. As far as I know, I haven't used their exchange in a while. I use the uh, platform to stake my coins and all the rest of it. But yeah, until they bring the layer two across, I haven't been able to use it. The costs were just too great. It'd be interesting to see what stocks they sort of, not stocks, what they have available. As far as I can remember from what I read, they're going to have uh, ETH, Bitcoin, uh, what else was there? I think there was three. I can't remember what it was, but I don't recall seeing any actual tech stock, synthetic tech stocks on there. Again, I could be wrong. I haven't used the exchange in a really long time just because of the fees. So I haven't even bothered to try and look at it. But whether they start trying to bring across synthetic assets of Apple and Google and things like that, and they can. It's not that it's illegal and you can't do it. You just have to make sure you are fully compliant with the SEC. So will you know synthetic, synthetic assets go down that route? Yeah, I, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But very, very interesting that, again, Binance got rid of them. Uh, FTX token, I think. FTX, not token, FTX exchange, I think still have them. Uh, and yeah, they could face some issues there. We'll have to wait and see. Last but not least, all right. Most of JP Morgan's clients see Bitcoin as an asset class and are demanding crypto services. So we hear all this, you know, stuff from different people. What's his name? Uh, Scott, Scott Minerd saying that, you know, oh, there's no appetite for Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies at the moment. And now we've got JP Morgan coming out and saying, oh, no, there's lots of people saying they see it as a Bitcoin. Oh, sorry, see Bitcoin as an asset class and are demanding crypto services. Again, you just have to be so careful with the information out there. And look, I just bring you stories and, you know, sort of you know go by what they're being told but i always take it with a pinch of salt as well because depending on where the source is coming from uh will depend on the uh, quality of the information it's not you know like this is crypto potato here it's not their fault for uh putting this story out unless they knew it to be completely fake because they're just repeating what other people are telling them that's what they do but we have to be careful again scott minerd coming out saying there's no appetite no one's interested in it at the moment uh, and we've had a number of places saying that of late. And I can almost guarantee you what you're going to find out is that they were buying stocks and companies that are about Bitcoin, you know, buying Bitcoin, buying, you know, stocks in, uh, excuse me, exchanges and all sorts of things. Even though they're openly coming out and telling everyone, oh, no, there's no interest in it. No one wants this. That's what they do to keep the prices down and FUD the market. Inside, they all know that's not true. Hence why they're buying the crap out of everything. And when they are finally done and ready, have, have all the you know amount of sort of stocks and whatever they want, then they're going to come out and say, yeah, it's actually turned around of late and we can see that a lot of people are interested in it because then that's going to start the boost, boost the price up. They've already got their position. Now they are getting ready to sell to everybody else. Now, not all of it. If it's a good stock, they don't want to sell all of it. But now that it starts to go up, they absolutely are going to start to sell some. They're going to have their sell points. They're going to say, all right, if it gets to here, we sell this much. And when it gets to there, we sell a little bit more. And when it gets to there, we sell a little bit more. And then when it gets to there, that's the last bit we're going to sell unless it you know, really goes just absolutely ballistic because they don't want to sell all of anything unless it was just for a quick flip. Most of the time, they're probably buying stuff to hold on to long term. And that is exactly what we've seen in the crypto markets. All this FUD, you know, this is going on, that's going on, and the price goes down and people are panicking. But yet here we are now, all of a sudden, literally only a week or two after Minerd and other people have come out and said there's just no institutional uh, interest in Bitcoin. And JP Morgan are saying most of their clients see Bitcoin specifically as an asset class and are demanding crypto services, not just Bitcoin services, but crypto. So likely things to do with DeFi, Ethereum, you name it, all that kind of stuff. This is the kind of world we're in. This is the space we're in. 
and this is how the big players act look at what they are doing don't pay so much attention to what they're saying don't get me wrong they can tell you the truth at times they're not always lying but most of the time when they're saying something there's an agenda behind it because that's how they make money they need to buy things uh, and convince people that that's not what they want until they've got their position in it and then they're going to tell you you know what you're right this is what you want because then they're going to start selling to you you're going to start buying uh, off them and you're also going to start buying and pumping up the price of what they have again and they have their sell points that's yeah classic market manipula you know I don't know if that's market manipulation as such because if they aren't you know truly manipulating the market simply by saying something is crap and no good to get the price to go down and then buying in is not market manipulation uh there's you know true market manipulation is a little bit different to that but it is definitely a form of manipulation all right i'm not going to take up any more of your time uh enjoy the rest of your day that's what i plan on doing even though most of it will be spent uh cleaning the house and doing things like that all right stay safe be kind to one another Everybody should be on that game train at the moment. Things are looking pretty good, but let's proceed with caution. And I'll see you next time.